What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're gonna be doing a little review on the Blue Eddy AC200 Max. Blue Eddy reached out to me and asked if it was something that I'd be interested in doing a review for you guys on the channel. And I thought it kind of fit right up the alley with the current theme of the channel as far as the camper build goes and just camping and overlanding in general. And if you stick around till the end of the video, we're gonna do some testing and see different various things that it can run and also kind of give you some more practical uses besides just camping. First off, I'd just like to say that this thing is an absolute beast. I mean, 2048 watt hours of power. If you guys have been doing any research on power banks in general, you will know that that is a whole truckload of power just to power just about anything that you would want. And if 2000 watt hours wasn't enough, there's two different power station expansions that you can get. Uh, it could bring you up to 6100 watt hours or 8100 watt hours, but we will get into that a little bit later in the video. Just to show you guys what actually comes in the box. So this is the main AC charger that you will just plug into the outlet in your home. And then this just plugs in right into the side of the unit over there. We also have a little assortment of cables over here. This is basically an adapter which screws into the unit there. And then from there, you can choose to add some 12 volt DC power from your vehicle, or you can add some solar power to the unit. And these are just your typical MC4 connectors. So not only will the Blue Eddy panels work with this unit, uh, any solar panel with the MC4 connectors should be compatible. Recharge time on our standard AC outlet is about five and a half to six hours. You can also get the option to do dual AC charging uh, and that will bring it down to about three to three and a half hours. And that may seem like a long time, but let's remember how much power this thing is truly harnessing. The unit is capable of handling up to 900 watts of solar input. Obviously, if you have the correct amount of panels, that's under optimal conditions, angle with the solar panel and correct sun. 900 watts of solar charging will net you about a three to three and a half hour charge time. And you can also combine it with AC. And at that point, it's getting up to 1300 watts for that's a max fast charging at about two to two and a half hours under optimal conditions for the solar panels. Don't expect some extremely fast charging out of our car charger port, but that's kind of not the whole point. You're not planning to recharge this whole unit. You're kind of just having this plugged into your vehicle and maintaining it while you're on your long trip. Let's say you're on a trip for seven to you know nine days and you're gonna be driving around in between everywhere. If you're just putting a little more juice into this thing every time you drive to a new location, it's gonna help keep it topped off and ensure that you got enough battery to run whatever you'd like while on your trip. Here on the side of the unit, this is where our AC will plug in to charge. This is where our adapter for our DC or our solar will plug in. And then these are for our optional battery banks to increase our power to either around 6,100 watt hours or 8,100 watt hours. To achieve 6,100 watt hours, it's about 6,144. You need two of the B230 expansions, or if you want the 8,192 watt hours, you need two of the B300 expansions. And for anyone thinking, oh great, you know, 20, 48 watt hours, what does that mean exactly? So for example, if you have a 55 watt heating blanket, so that's kind of an average I looked up online, draws 55 watts per hour. So it'll consume 55 watt hours per hour. So you break it down 20, 48, you could get roughly 37 hours of usage out of this power bank with a heated blanket. So from there, when you're going to pick the size of your power bank, that'll give you a rough estimate on how to kind of figure what each of your uh, items is going to use power wise and what size you truly need to get for your build. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and turn the unit on here. So as of right now, we got a 41% charge and uh, this is after a little bit of real world testing this past weekend. So I went to Expo. I had this sitting in my truck running a 45 quart ice co free uh, fridge freezer combo at about 34 degrees and it ran from Thursday night until Sunday evening and I still had 41% battery left on here. I also charged the laptop, uh, some other miscellaneous things on this power bank while I was at Expo. So that gives you an idea of how stout and how much juice this thing truly has. Um, I also did a kind of an independent test at home and it ran that fridge for just under seven days. Um, it was inside my house, so the temperature was, you know, about 70 degrees or so, but still seven days keeping a fridge at about uh, 34 degrees. I would say that's very impressive for a power bank this size. It comes in at about 16.2 inches this way, uh, 16 inches tall, and then about 11 inches back. And I think it's about 61.9 pounds. So it does have a little bit of weight to it, but I think with the amount of power that this unit has, the weight definitely makes it worth it. So there's a couple different ways that we can monitor the unit and make some selections about what we want to have power and what we don't want to have power. One way is on our touchscreen interface, and then they also have an app 
which is actually super easy to use. So you just turn it on, hit connect, scans for the closest unit, hit there, okay, and then boom, it's already up that fast. I mean, you don't have to go any through any crazy trouble to get it paired or anything. Shows our percentage. You can turn your DC and AC off. So we'll go ahead and turn our DC on. So now you see we got the juice flowing there. You can go here and verify that our DC is on. And then what else I will show you up here, there is a charging spot for your phone. So let's go ahead and charging. So it's that simple if you wanna turn it on and charge your phone or charge anything else, uh, just as simple as a button. And this, these are two 15 watt uh, wireless charging for your phone up here, which I did not expect. I think that's a pretty cool feature, especially if this is in your camper or something like that. You can just kind of set your phone up there and get it charging. We're gonna run around and take a look at the rest of the available ports on here. So this is your standard uh, cigarette outlet like you find in a car. Uh, you typically, if you're running a fridge or any, a 12 volt fridge off of this, that's what you'd plug it into. This is a 30 amp 12 volt plug. I don't personally have anything that will plug into that, but I'm sure somebody out there will have a use for it. Here we just got some standard 12 volt. So my Milwaukee fan uses one of these. Uh, it's like a little round uh, 12 volt connector and some other just random appliances, maybe even like a heat blanket or something, might plug straight into that. We got a USB-C, uh, some of our iPhones, iPads, laptops, stuff like that. We need some more power, probably use that outlet right there. Here we got some standard USB outlets. I believe one of them is a more fast charging. I believe it's this one that's a three amp. And then here we're moving on to our AC power. So these are all standard wall outlets right here and they're capable of an output of 2000 watts, uh, which is very impressive that can run quite a bit of appliances and quite a bit of luxury items while camping or even just at your house when the power's out. Here we got an outlet that's capable of 2200 watts. You might find this more uh, standard in the RV industry or if you have kind of a medium sized camper you may be able to just plug straight into this thing and power everything throughout your camper if your electrical system is set up like that. All right we're going to go ahead and turn our DC power off. We are going to turn our AC power on. Sorry that the screen looks a little funny. You guys know cameras and LED screens don't work well. Uh, it's a very nice and neat screen in person. All right, just an example to show you guys, put a draw on the unit. You got a Milwaukee battery charger here, just a battery that's slightly drained. We'll go ahead and plug it in. All right, and then as you can see, it shows you the amount of watts that it's drawing. So we're at about 130, 132 watts or so. And from our little test earlier that I showed you, we got 2048 watt hours. So we'll do 2038 divided by, we'll just say 130, 15.75. So almost 16 hours. So that's basically saying that it will charge uh, Milwaukee battery packs for about 16 hours, which is a super long time. You know they don't take that long to charge. If that gives you any idea about how much juice this unit actually has. And that honestly seems to just be the initial. Now it's down to about 89, uh, around 90 watts or so. So even more runtime out of that charger if need be. I know some of you guys may be thinking, uh, does this thing have pass through charging, AKA can you have it having input from solar and also doing output or input from the truck and doing output and yes. So complete pass through charging, you can have it plugged into the wall and getting solar at the same time or plugged into the truck and getting solar um, and it's still gonna be able to give you your power ports available and run whatever you need it to run. I think a good example of when that's necessary is if this is plugged into your truck and it's kind of a trickle charge in a little bit and then this is still in your vehicle running your fridge simultaneously, you don't have to worry about your fridge shutting off while this thing's charging. So here we're gonna go over just some common things that you may wanna run this unit. I did get this list online. I didn't fact check all these watts, but they gotta be pretty close. Uh, space heater, 1800 watts. That's obviously gonna be a huge tax on the uh, juice of the unit itself. And I wouldn't recommend expecting that to run it for a long time. It's just not made for stuff like that. Coffee maker, a uh, thousand watts. So sure, you can make some cups of coffee with a real coffee maker. Uh, if camping, if that's kind of your thing, you run a microwave, ceiling fan, only 60 watts. I could run a fan for a long time. Pretty sure this thing would run the fan in my camper uh, way longer than I'd ever need it to, even on a week trip. Laptop, 50 watts. Uh, TV, 85 watts. Um, let's see, blender, 400 watts if you wanna make some margaritas on the beach or anything like that. Slow cooker, so like crock pot, 170 watts. You can definitely get some runtime out of this thing 
on that. Bigger items like a hair dryer, 1250 watts, pretty much anything heating something is gonna really draw a lot and tax any electrical system no matter what you're running. These are some more common things that maybe you RV guys or some van life people will run into. Obviously a phone charger, 10 watts, this thing will charge, I don't know how many phones. A small AC for you guys maybe that usually run AC units at campgrounds, 900 to 1700 watts. I assume that's a water pump. Um, if you have like heater, microwave, phone charger, laptop, computer, iPad, tablet. So that's just gonna give you a quick look at how much power some everyday things will draw. So circling back to the beginning of the video, I told you guys I was gonna give you some suggestions on or reasons I think that this thing is very useful besides camping. And I would say one major thing is power outages. Obviously you guys are familiar with hurricanes that hit Florida or any bad snowstorms that you guys get in the Northeast or out West or literally just anywhere. You never know when you're gonna run out of power and you don't want your food to go bad in your fridge at home. This thing is capable of running the fridge in your house. So not only will you have plenty of power to go camping, you also have a nice backup for uh, peace of mind at home keep make sure your food doesn't go bad maybe just <laughs> enough power to run the tv and the wi-fi router to keep your kids entertained while your power's out i mean there's just so many different scenarios where having a power bank like this can be extremely useful besides camping i know some of you viewers out there may be doing some research on this maybe you have a cpap machine or something like that uh, and obviously that's a very important device in your life so having some power like this out on the trail camping or even when the power goes out at home can really come in handy all right so i was just looking around online and also found this list for any of you guys that are in the garage like me maybe you have something out in the driveway that you can't quite get in the garage and you want to use a power bank to run it uh, so you're like jigsaw three to seven hundred watts bandsaw seven to twelve hundred watts uh, maybe you're building a tree house out in the woods or maybe you're starting construction on your new home don't have power quite run yet with a unit like this and some solar you can effectively run a little bit of a job site and it'll kind of help you get by until you get the power you need or get one of those one-off jobs done in your driveway i think needless to say i'm very impressed with the unit and i think it could be handy for a lot of people in a lot of situations any of you guys with a little tiny home or a van or even just at home as a backup power bank it's cool having like a dedicated system on your van or something like that but having something that you can move from the van to in the house uh, to in rv bring it to a friend's house just bring it just about anywhere and it'd be of use to you i think is huge i'm big on versatility so i, I really like these power banks and i'm real thankful for blue eddie sent this out to me uh do a little review for you guys and if you have any questions uh, leave some comments below i'd love to answer them thanks for watching we'll see you next time